Please say hello to Tom Wilkinson. Welcome. Hi. Nice people. Well, happy to see you, my friend. <laughs> oh. Hello. How are things? I think they're all right. Yeah? Yes. Um, congratulations on felony. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Works very well. I saw it for the first time last night, yeah. which was a thrill. Is it unnerving to watch a film at this stage of your career? Is it still unnerving? Has it ever been unnerving? It's always unnerving, and increasingly, as I, you know, you, you look and you think, who is that old, fat man? <laughs> oh, it's me! <laughs> it's incredible how the brain keeps you preserved at some age. What age are you in your mind? In your mind, I'm about 39. Right. And um, there is a, there is a, there's a thing in one of the newspapers in England which is called, what, what do you see when you look in the mirror? And then people describe, you know, the aging, and I think I've aged quite well, and stuff like that. And I always think, if I was ever asked to do that, when I look in the mirror, I don't want to... I don't, it's not what I look like I'm interested in. It's who I am. Yeah. Who are you? It's, yeah, you look in the mirror and you think, who is this person I've been looking at fairly continuously for a long time? <laughs> and he's still a bit of a mystery. Anyway, that's another question. But is a mystery, seriously? Yeah. Yeah? I, th I think maybe that's probably why you acting is a good thing to do. I'm um, working with Joel Edgerton. We had him on the film. He was very... He said he was very grateful to have you in the, in the show. Is it simply a case of you read it and you want to do this? Yeah. I didn't want to do it. I, I, you know, another thing that happens as you get older is you don't want to leave home so much. And I was on holiday, and, and you know, the last thing I wanted to do was get in an airplane and go to Australia. I mean, it's tough enough going around the corner to the local <laughs> hardware store for me. <laughs> Australia, and I read it, and within three seconds, I thought, I'm, I'm going to do this. It's, it's just too good to, to pass over. Are there certain kinds of stories you're looking for? No, but you intuitively recognize something that you think is somehow going to be good. Good. And, and, and it's good for you. If, if by the end of the, the first reading, you've already decided how you're going to do it, right. the chances are you, you, you're going to say yes. If you look at the scope of your career, it doesn't seem like a big deal that 18 months or so when you weren't working, because you've had so much success. When you were in the 18 months or so, what did it feel like? Well, 18 months. Yeah, about 18 months where you, you didn't work as much in your career. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was always fairly optimistic. I would never get depressed. I just used to think, you know, I'd go for a job and didn't get it. But I, 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 it was... I, I always used to think like Coriolanus, which is... There is a world elsewhere. Mm -hmm. It's your, it's you, if you, if you don't hire me for the job, you've made the mistake. I always felt sort of confident and not in an arrogant way, but in a, it, you know, I just thought it, it'll work out. It's got to. Where do you suspect that came from? Well, that confidence in the moment. Clue. <laughs> Family? It's not confidence. It's just the cast of your mind. Right. One of the things that, being an actor, it, 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 you know, talent is important and all that, but it's not the most important thing. The most important thing, and it may not be, it may be true for, for other jobs as well, but for, certainly, you've got to be able to take setbacks. You've got to have a thick skin mm -hmm. if you're an actor. You've got to be able to sort of go for a job that you think you're perfect for and not get it and not feel bitter at the end of it. Just think, okay, that's all right. The next one I'll get. Many do, and many claim that that's what drives them, mm. the need to be accepted. Yeah, but, I mean, some people get crushed by, by not getting a job, feel disappointed and, and hurt, and what's, what's wrong with me that I, you know... No, that's not the right way to deal with that. You've never felt that, even in, in your no. early days? Never. Never. I've never been disappointed. I wonder, then, for you, playing Goebbels... What? You got to play Goebbels once, didn't you? What's... Uh, it was, a, uh, was it the Jack Boots on Whitehall? Were you in that? Jack, I'm just thinking of your, your long run of films that you've been in. It's one of your pictures, isn't is it? Is it? Yes. <laughs> What's it called? Jack Boots on Whitehall. Maybe they renamed it. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember, yeah. <laughs> and you played one of the most hated of the group. Yeah. <laughs> what, what? 
was a cartoon film. I yeah, it was as if it was with the, the idea being, let's say, the war ended differently, and suddenly. That's not, right. Yes. That's right. Oh dear God. Yeah, I've, I haven't thought of that for ages. <laughs> what did this particular movie mean to you? Take a look at this clip. Joe, dear, are you ready? For what? Will you come to mass with me? Oh, Rosie, I've got a stack of calls this high, each one more important than the last. What could be more important than praying for Jack? Getting the Polak vote out in Detroit. I'll go with you tomorrow, sweetheart, after Jack's elected. See that he eats a good lunch, will you, Michelle, dear? Yes, Mrs. Kennedy. Finest wife a fella could have. But I don't understand her faith. One of the most uh, controversial figures in American political history, for yeah. sure, right? Joe Kennedy. But tell me about that scene. I can't remember it, but I mean, I... I... That, that's my real wife yeah, no, I know. In, in that yeah. scene. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> well, that scene, the finest wife a man could have. I, that's another one of those... It was interesting playing Joe Kennedy because he was such an interesting guy. And uh, I didn't research him that much. I mean, I'd seen, I'd seen him on TV. Because uh, 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 he filmed very little, because he was just of that era where there they wasn't an awful lot of them on, on, you know, that was filmed. So in a sense, I made him up. Like I played a few years ago Benjamin Franklin. Completely made up. I don't know whether he was like that at all, but I just thought, <laughs> no one's around going to say, actually, I knew Ben Franklin. <laughs> he, he didn't talk like that. I just thought, yeah, I'll make it up. I'll, I'll think he's probably like this. It's a good idea. I'm going to take a sort of bit of a guess. <laughs> and it was going to have to work. You're going to have to buy it. When you say that finest wife in the world line and you're looking at your wife, yeah. are you aware that it's her you're talking to? Yeah. I love working with my wife. When I first worked with her, we did a film a few years ago, and I thought, oh, I'm not going to have any fun. I don't mean have affairs and stuff. I just, oh, my wife is here. It's just going to be like a... <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it's, it was the best ever. I couldn't believe that we had such a good time together. And, and um, it was such a liberation, you know, to get away from home and cooking and the kids coming round and, you know, putting out the garbage and stuff like that. It was just... <laughs> In a hotel in Italy. How lovely. <laughs> Stick around more with Tom Wilkinson right after this. Yes, he has been in loads of movies. But coming up with Tom, what it was that set him on his path. Job. I love, I love, I love the fact that you sit there and your answers are so. You're not precious about it. There's almost no bullshit from you at all as it relates to acting. There's no pretense in a way. No. <laughs> or at least I, I, I've sold you yeah. that. Uh, there must be uh, some. I mean, at some point, and you've obviously grown up around it because in theater or in film, you're going to come across it. And a lot of who we are as a, peop a person, I find, is defined by what we don't want to be when we see it acted out on other people. Is that part of your story as well? Do you know what? I wasn't listening to you. I was thinking of something else. <laughs> I was thinking of th something you said earlier on what about... Th um, what were you thinking about? I was thinking about... The... the oh, I'm so sorry, but I was, I was... I was... Yeah. The English acting scene is very different from... The, Eng the acting scene that I was brought up in is very different from the one that, that North America, which is very much kind of oriented around movies yeah. and the mystique of being a movie star right. and stuff like that. You could, when I first started doing theatre, and, and which was, you know, in the 70s, basically, uh, uh, that world, you didn't, you, that was, it was just work and you did it and it was fun and you couldn't, you know, the, and your colleagues were, wouldn't stand for any of that crap. And so you grew up like that. That's the whole, one of the things that is characteristic of 
most English actors that they they're they're pretty straight and and don't don't do the kind of movie star mystique grandiosity. Tell me about Molly Sodden. Is it Sodden? Is that how you pronounce it? Miss, how do you know about her? <laughs> how do you know about her? <laughs> She was, uh, when I was 16, I lived in Devon, and my father died, and we moved to Yorkshire, which is where I was born, which is in, in England, Yorkshire, England, and it's in the north of England. And I went to a, a school, which is called King James's Grammar School, Knaresborough, and I had a, a less than glittering academic record. <laughs> In fact, it was awful. <laughs> and I, I, I went and I arrived at this school and I had to do it with English. I was doing what we called A-levels then. I don't know what they're called now, but they, you, know, you just do two or three subjects as opposed to lots of different ones. And one of them was English. And the woman who taught me was this rather f scary, dim diminutive woman called Molly Thornton who started teaching me on her own. I didn't have anybody else in, in, in the class. It was just her and I. And she would have been, I would have been, of course, 16, 17, and she would have been maybe 50. And she, she saw something. And she, she, she invited me to her home with her partner who was called uh, Paddy, who was a woman who wore suits and a monocle. A monocle. A monocle. <laughs> and uh, they, they, they would say to me, I remember now, Molly said to me, okay, now you, want, you come to supper and you must bring a present. It doesn't have to be expensive, but you must bring a present. I brought a little box of chocolates. She said, now here's what happens. Uh, you, you'll, the first course, which will be soup, you start on the outside. Those are the things you use. You use the spoon, and that, not that spoon, that's for, that's for dessert. The spoon on the side. And she taught me all these things. You know, I'm a working class kid. Right. That I didn't know from anything. In a same sex couple house. Yeah. And the, but there were other kids, I mean, they would, every year, every about every four or five years, they would pick somebody out and change their lives. Do you think that it was that she had known your father had passed and saw and, and was trying to fill a hole? No, no? I don't know. I, I never... I, I never asked her. Uh, it was just one of those sort of things that was just changes your life. It, there was no question that it changed my life. I thought, what am I going to do with my glittering academic career? <laughs> I might end up being a teacher of gymnastics, teacher, you know, sports. <laughs> yeah. I was good at sports. You were? Beyond that, um, not only that, she, she, you know, she, she, she made with her connections, she talked to people in universities and said, you've got to go see, you've got to see this kid, it, you, you know. So I got in, sort of got in through, into university through, uh, through Molly. But by the grace of others, right? How important it is to take an interest in somebody. Yeah, absolutely astonishing. Do you want to go back and answer that question I was going to ask when you weren't listening, or should I? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Ask, ask it. Ask no, it. I'm just kidding. We've moved on to such a lovely place. Mm. You're really great in felony. I really appreciate your time today. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Guys, see the picture, Tony. It's really wonderful. We'll be right back.